Okay, if you love Black Forest cake, then you're in the right place because today I am finally sharing my incredibly delicious, light and airy Black Forest cake recipe. It's made up of soft chocolate sponge cake layers soaked in a cherry syrup, topped with a sour cherry filling, stabilized whipped cream and dark chocolate. It is so, so, so good. So we're going to start off with our sour cherry filling first because it needs some time to cool. So for Black Forest cake, you wanna use sour cherries, also known as Morello cherries, and you want a 680 gram or 700 gram jar with syrup. So first we're going to separate the cherry juice from the cherries. So just pour the cherries on top of a sieve with a bowl underneath to catch the liquid. Now you wanna save both the cherries and the cherry juice because we're gonna be using both of them for this recipe. Now next, grab a saucepan and to it add in 40 grams or three tablespoons of cherry juice, which is just the liquid from the jar of cherries and you wanna save the rest of the juice for later. 50 grams or a quarter cup of white granulated sugar, 14 grams or one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice, 15 grams or two tablespoons of cornstarch, an eighth of a teaspoon of almond essence or extract, and an eighth of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Give that a good stir and then place it over a medium heat, stirring every now and then until the mixture thickens up in consistency. Once it's ready, you want to grab your cherries from earlier and add them to the thickened liquid. It should be close to about 400 grams of cherries and then just give it a gentle stir until the cherries are nicely coated. So that is the filling for our Black Forest cake all done, but we do need it to come to room temperature. So to speed up the process, I'm just transferring it into a different dish which is slightly larger so I can spread it out a little bit more. Now just set your cherry filling aside for now to cool and next we're going to make the syrup for our cake layers. Now traditional Black Forest cake has a cherry brandy in the syrup but because I don't drink alcohol I've left that out but after doing a lot of research to make up for the cherry brandy which I'm told has an almost nutty undertone, this syrup consists of 150 grams of the cherry juice from the jar of cherries and an eighth of a teaspoon of almond essence or extract. The almond flavor honestly makes a huge difference to just using the cherry juice on its own. It really amplifies the flavor and makes it more pungent too. Now you just wanna set your cherry filling and cherry syrup aside for now. And next we're gonna move on to the cake layers. Now a Black Forest cake is supposed to be nice and light as opposed to, you know, dense and heavy. So you wanna to stick to making a sponge cake as opposed to an oil or butter cake. So you wanna start off by preheating your oven to 160C or 320F with the fan turned on, also known as convection mode, and greasing or lining only the bottom of three eight inch cake tins. By not greasing the sides, it's going to help our sponge cake layers stick to the sides as they rise, and this is going to help prevent them from deflating once they're taken out of the oven. So you just wanna set your cake tins aside for now, and next we're going to sift together our dry ingredients. So I've got 90 grams or three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour, 30 grams or a quarter cup of cornstarch, also known as corn flour in some countries, 35 grams or a third cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, use Dutch processed cocoa powder if you can access it, one teaspoon of instant coffee powder and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then using a whisk, just mix that together until it's well combined and set it aside for now. Next, in a small bowl or mug, combine 30 grams or two tablespoons of unflavored vegetable oil, I use canola oil, and 28 grams or two tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. Give that a good mix and then just set it aside for now as well. Next, in a large bowl, add in six large eggs, and today we're using whole eggs, so we're not separating the yolks from the whites. 200 grams or one cup of white granulated sugar, and two teaspoons of vanilla essence or extract. Stir that with a whisk until it's well combined and then place the bowl over a small pot of simmering water and make sure that the bottom of the bowl isn't touching the water. And then you just wanna keep stirring and monitoring the mixture until the sugar crystals are completely dissolved and the mixture is warm to the touch. Or if you do have a thermometer, you can use that too. So up until the mixture reaches 45 degrees Celsius. Now, if you don't have a thermometer, then all you need to do is every now and then feel the mixture with clean hands. And once it's warm and you can't feel any sugar granules anymore, then it's done. And you wanna take it off the heat immediately at that point, because if you overheat the mixture, then you're gonna end up with scrambled eggs, which we don't want. Now, either using a hand or stand mixer on a medium high speed, whip that until the mixture triples in volume and becomes nice and thick. You should be able to lift the batter and form ribbons with it that sit at the top of the batter before eventually being absorbed back in. And this can take 
anywhere from five to 10 minutes based on the strength and speed of your mixer. Now, once it's at the stage that we want, so you can kind of, you know, form ribbons with it like this, then you want to turn your mixer down to the lowest speed and let it mix for a further two minutes. And this is just going to help stabilize the eggs by removing large air bubbles. Okay, now once that's done, the next step is to sift in half of our dry ingredients from earlier into the egg mixture. So this will be the second time we're sifting our dry ingredients, and you wanna gently fold it in with a spatula until it's almost combined. Then you wanna sift the remaining half of the dry ingredients in, and this time fold until it's just combined. Then to finish off, and in the melted butter and oil mixture from earlier, it should still be nice and liquid. So if your butter has solidified a little bit, then just reheat it a bit in the microwave. And again, just fold that in until it's just combined. Remember to do this gently as we want to try and retain as many of the air bubbles as possible. Okay, now once you're done, you should have a thick flowy batter like this. And now you just want to evenly distribute the batter into your pre-prepared cake tins. Now usually I don't really weigh my cake tins, but when I am making three cake layers, then I do weigh them just to make sure that there's, you know, an even amount in each cake tin. Now to finish off, you want to run a toothpick through the batter to remove any large air bubbles. This is just going to help make sure that we don't have any big holes when we come to cutting through our cake. And then you also want to drop your cake tins lightly on the counter. And now these are going to go into the oven for 22 minutes or until the top of the cake layers are set. So when you touch the top of the cakes, your finger should create a small indent which slowly bounces back. Now once your cakes are done, you want to drop them from a height of about 10 centimeters to release some of the steam and then turn them upside down to cool for about 30 minutes. Now 30 minutes later, run a knife around the edges of the cake tins to help release the cakes and then turn them out onto a wire rack or tray to finish off cooling. Now while the cake's finished cooling, we're going to go ahead and prepare our dark chocolate. So the easiest way that I've found to do this is to simply grab a block of dark chocolate. I use 50% dark chocolate so that it's not too bitter. And you're going to need about 180 grams in total. And then you just want to use a peeler to grate the chocolate. And you should end up with little thin pieces which we're going to use to cover the sides of our cake. Okay, now once you've got enough chocolate, you just want to pop it into the fridge to chill. And next we're going to move on to our final element, which is our stabilized whipped cream frosting. Now you can just use a regular whipped cream with some icing sugar in it, but today I'm going to be making a mascarpone whipped cream, which honestly just tastes incredible. And it's also more stable as well. So in a large bowl, combine 225 grams or one cup of cold mascarpone, 60 grams or half a cup of icing sugar, also known as powdered or confectioner's sugar, and one teaspoon of vanilla. And then you just wanna mix that on a low speed for about 10 seconds, and then turn up the speed to a medium high and mix until it's well combined and everything is nice and smooth. It should take about a minute or so. Once that's done, add in 670 grams or three cups of cold whipping cream and mix on a low speed for about 10 seconds just to allow everything to combine properly without, you know, the cream splattering everywhere. And then turn up the speed to a medium high and whip until you reach stiff peaks. You just wanna make sure to keep a close eye on the cream as you don't wanna over whip it. Okay, so that is my whipped cream all done and now it is finally time to bring everything together. So to start off, you just wanna gently brush off that dark crust on the top of our cake layers. And this is just going to help our syrup soak into the cake layers better. Next, place your first cake layer onto your cake stand and using a pastry brush, soak it generously with the cherry syrup. You wanna use all of the syrup, so roughly use about a third of the syrup per cake layer. Next, place about a quarter of the whipped cream into a piping bag with a 1A large round tip on it and pipe a border around the top edge of the cake layer. This border is going to prevent our cherry filling from seeping out of the sides of our cake. Next, place half of the cherry mixture in the middle and spread it out evenly. Then cover the cherries with a layer of the whipped cream and spread it out so everything is level. Then place your next cake layer on top and repeat the process. So generously soak the cake layer with the cherry syrup, then pipe a border of whipped cream around the top and then evenly spread out the remaining cherries in the middle and top with more whipped cream, spreading it out so that it's level. 
Then place the last cake layer on top, soak it with the remaining cherry syrup, and then spread out a thin layer of the cream on the top and sides of the cake. I like to smooth out the sides with my cake scraper and use an offset spatula to bring the top lip of frosting into the middle of the cake so that I have some nice sharp edges. Now for the final touches, I'm using the chilled shredded chocolate to cover the entire sides of the cake. And by chilling the chocolate, it's going to help prevent them from melting too quickly. And I find that just using my hands to do this is the easiest way to stick the chocolate to the sides. Now for the top of my cake, I'm just popping the remaining whipped cream frosting into a piping bag with a 1M star tip on it. And then I'm just piping some little swirls around the top edges of the cake. And then with some of my remaining shredded chocolate, I'm just sprinkling that out evenly into the middle of the cake. And that's just going to make sure that we get some chocolate in every bite. Now the final, final touch is to add some cherries on the top of each of your little swirls. Now, I completely forgot to get extra for my cake, but I'm gonna go right after this and get some, and so I will pop them on for my beauty shots. But apart from that, my Black Forest cake is all done. But now is the hardest part, and that is waiting to slice into your cake, because with a Black Forest cake, you need to let it chill in the fridge for a minimum of four hours, ideally overnight, because it takes some time for all those flavors to develop and also soak into the sponge. So just be patient and trust me, it will be so, so worth it. This Black Forest cake is honestly so, so incredibly delicious. The sponge cake is so nice and soft and is full of cherry flavor. The cherry filling has a wonderful tart flavor to it and that stabilized whipped cream and dark chocolate just honestly bring this whole cake together. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> It has a wonderful rich cherry flavor and that chocolate sponge is so, so nice and soft. And it's so wonderfully light as well. Like I've literally almost finished my slice. So that is it guys. If you do decide to give this Black Forest recipe a go and you love it just as much as I do, then please do leave a review on my blog. It really helps my content out and I absolutely love hearing from you guys. I'll see you in the next video.